And hello, my friends, and welcome to Warframe, where if you're joining me today, I have learned a decent lesson in clickbait, and you're here to learn how to cheese one of Warframe's most difficult and most daunting achievements when taken at face value. This achievement is no-brainer, which requires you to complete a void extermination mission with only headshots, as a team or solo, doesn't matter. The difficulty of this mission comes in taking it at face value. The way I entered this mission when I decided I was going to get this achievement meant go into this mission, get 120 to 200 headshots, and extract. That is extremely difficult when some enemies don't have crit spots, don't have head sh heads that you can shoot. Or, say you get 30, 50 kills in, well then you're going to start getting Eximus. And, on occasion, someone's going to move. You're going to miss a headshot or Warframe just being the wonderful game that it is is going to make you miss the headshot is not going to count and you got to start over abort mission go again extraordinarily difficult and very daunting but in doing the mission myself I learned that Kills made by traps and friendly fire will increase the kill count of the mission, progressing you towards completion without counting towards your personal kill count. So what does this mean? Boil it down, st plain string beans, whatever. It means go into the mission, get a single headshot kill and then kill the rest of the enemies between your 119 to 199 enemies with traps and friendly fire now the question is how do you do this and the answer is simple the radiation status proc when an enemy or yourself, is hit with radiation, they become capable of doing friendly fire damage. And if you hit an enemy with it, they will actively seek out friendlies to shoot. And enemies that are not affected with radiation will actively shoot out enemies that are affected with radiation. It essentially just flips them onto their own side where they're aggressive towards everything. So, you need a weapon that deals low base damage, purely radiation damage, and has a high status chance. And if that sounds difficult, it's really not. There are a couple options, one of which does not even require the dojo, uh, thus being the Atomos. With a base 21% status chance, that's not bad. You could crank that up decently high, but it's not going to hit the point where you're doing a status proc every single time you land a hit. That means you're going to have to be doing more damage and as such, it gets a little riskier to get those radiation procs going. But also note innate heat damage, which means you'll need to add a little bit of electricity damage to get it to work. But you'll, it works. It is the most cost effective easy to access option. Past that, 
there is the Nucor, which does require access to the clan dojo, but with a higher status chance, you're going to be able to reach a higher overall status chance and have to do less damage to get more radiation procs. And the new core does base radiation damage, so you don't need to add any damage to it. And while those are more cost-effective options, more easy to access depending on where you're at in the game, the best option for you is the Kuva new core. With a base status chance of 50%, which is ridiculous, it is very easy to get this weapon over 100% status chance without having to rely on the 60-60 damage status chance mods. Which, you can see I've done here. I have Sure Shot, 90% status chance. Stunning Speed, an additional 30% status chance. With that alone, I am at 110% status chance. Every single time I hit something, I will do a status proc. But, a flaw, or potential flaw, depending on what Kuva New Core you have acquired, is the innate elemental type based on the progenitor warframe you use to make your lich. Mine is Toxin, which Toxin does a damage over time when it applies, and that's a problem. Because when you stop firing, you need your damage to stop. Hence, I have put Deep Freeze on my new core to turn the Toxin into Viral, halves their health, but my damage stops. So if I'm paying attention, it's okay. Suppress is the last mod I have here. Not mandatory, but useful, particularly with Ivara as I'm running her. Now, your secondary, be it Atomos, Nucor, or Kuva Nucor, is going to be doing the bulk of the work in the mission. Let's talk about your other slots. Melee doesn't matter. You're not going to use it because it's not reliable. Primary can be anything that you can use to reliably get a one-shot, not even a one-shot, just a headshot kill. Sniper rifle, bow, machine gun, assault rifle, whatever you want to use to get your one kill works. Now, Warframe. You can do this with any Warframe you want. Plain and simple. It's just going to be a little bit easier the more frames you have access to. Ivara or Loki are your best bet because of invisibility. When you are invisible, you are not a target for the irradiated enemies. So they'll spend less time shooting you and more time shooting each other, which just helps you to be a little bit more efficient. Now, Evara Prime and Loki Prime have another slight benefit. There's, there's this little known fact of the Void Death Orbs, which thankfully this mission is in the Void, the spinny balls that fire lasers and have that plunger that goes up, comes down, and they send out a shockwave. Touching one of those with a prime warframe grants 250 energy. Thus, you can stay invisible longer because several tiles have anywhere between two and six death orbs. That's a potential for 1,500 energy. Even my loadout, even though I lack a maxed out primed flow, I can store 700 energy. That can keep you invisible for a long time. Now, let's look at Ivara. So, what you need is continuity. Doesn't have to be primed. That's your duration. Augur message. Streamline more duration, 
more efficiency. Flow does not have to be primed. All that gives you more energy, more duration, and more efficiency. Because Evara's Prowl is a slow drain over time, or well, relatively slow, you both duration and efficiency work together to keep you invisible longer. Additionally, if you've done Deimos, or formerly Orokin, derelict vaults, you might have access to narrow-minded and fluting expertise to greatly increase efficiency as well as duration. Now, a final useful but not totally necessary is infiltrate. This makes Ivara immune to the lasers fired by the Auric and Void Death Orbs, which normally do quite a bit of damage, and Ivara is not a tanky frame. So, you just take no damage from them, and it's, hey, all hunky-dory. But also, a little 25% movement speed boost, <laughs> which, while you're prowling, you're slowed, so it's definitely a bonus. And that's really it. Now, let's go ahead. Oh, also, Sentinel. I would recommend just taking it off. Don't take a companion. Just to prevent any and all accidental kills. Okay, so. Now, in mission, Void Death Orb. Look at the bottom right, 113 energy. Boom, 364. Now, let's go invisible. We got ourselves a little corpus, dude. Boom. Your mission progress. Keep fighting. As long as the one enemy kill, is here, this one tower headshot is kill. To us. Now, you want to make sure you don't get any kills. All you need to do come over, find some enemies, tick them, irradiate them, and they will start doing the hard part of this mission for you. And as you'll note, as they get kills, they will continue to your, well, sorry, your kill count will continue to increase. And this is the mission. All you have to do is just keep going, slowly make sure you don't <laughs> accidentally kill anybody yourself and you will cheese the no-brainer achievement so this has been Sarong. cheesing very difficult achievement <laughs> hope you've learned something i hope you go out and you get yourself the 150 gamer score that is this achievement or whatever it's worth on PlayStation or PC. And so until next time, stay sharp, and I'll see you then.